The Move, Look, and Listen podcast with Dr. Doug Steffi is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial Audible membership at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. You'll find over 180,000 titles to choose from, including several books mentioned here in the podcast. Support the Move, Look, and Listen podcast by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. If our two eyes are not working together well as a fast, synchronized team, our internal map quest continues to be off. It's consistently inconsistent with our ability to judge time and space. Those that don't feel well grounded, those that have some measure of anxiety, oftentimes it starts in the visual system. If you can't move, look, and listen in a fast, accurate, effortless, sustainable, age-appropriate, meaningful way, you're in a world of hurt. There's a whole world in vision and how it affects brain function that no one's ever shared with you. 2020 is perceived as the holy grail of going to the eye doctor. Well, I'm here to change that paradigm. This is episode eight of the Move, Look, and Listen podcast with Dr. Doug Steffi. You know, we've talked about a lot of things in this podcast, Dr. Steffi, and today we're going to tie in vision and nutrition. So for those that that maybe I've just stumbled across Apple Podcasts or whatever platform they're listening to their podcast, they're probably wondering what in the heck do these two have in common? And you've alluded to them several times. You've more than alluded. You've discussed them in detail in several previous episodes. But today we're going into fish oil, right? Fish oil, how fish oil in particular, or omega-3s, can, yep, can that's help right. your vision and other aspects of your being. Yeah, that's right, Tim. So let's let's launch off into this. Omega-3s, they're a big deal. There's one theory about human development that goes back, what, 20, 30, 40,000 or so years. There's one theory that says that when humans started eating a seafood diet, the size of our brain exploded in size. Arguably, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's, that's, that's the theory of human development. There's, there's two theories that I've heard about why we have the brains that we do today. One is the amount of omega-3 fatty acids that we used to eat, and the other was man's ability to use tools mm-hmm. because using tools requires a concept called motor planning and motor sequencing, which ties into that millisecond timing clock that we were talking about last episode. Right. But motor planning and sequencing, it's the, it is a platform for speech and language and eye movement control and auditory processing and cognitive abilities, all starting through motor planning and motor sequencing. So omega-3s, as people may or may not know, is the long chain fatty acid associated with fish oil. And there's a ratio called the AA to EPA ratio, arachidonic acid to icosopentanoic acid levels. And the phenomenal thing about this ratio is that very few physicians actually seem to know or talk about it. And I tell you that because I was in to see my family physician uh, a few weeks ago who didn't seem to know a lot about the AAEPA ratio. Uh, I have a couple of brain injury recovery patients in my practice who've gone back and asked their uh, neuro rehab doctors about this ratio. They didn't seem to know anything about it. Another patient of mine had a stroke last summer. She's in her late 40s. She went back and talked to her cardiologist about this ratio. He didn't know anything about it, but at least was interested to read. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a friend of mine who's an ER physician back in Michigan who didn't seem to know a lot about it. And I'm, and I, I'm stunned. Yeah, flabbergasted, I think. I mean, because the, like you said, it's a big deal. You talk about brain development and overall health, and yet these physicians know nothing about it. I remember about probably going back 15, 20 years when I first started to read about omega-3 fatty acids, there was a handful of pregnant women at the time in my practice. And I said, hey, uh, has your baby doctor talked to you about omega-3 fatty acids in your diet? They're like, no, what are you talking about? I'm like, you should be taking omega-3 fatty acids. 
He should have been taking them six months before he considered getting pregnant. The, the baby doctor was probably talking about folic acid. Not omega-3s. Right. And I'm like, if you don't believe me, just go do a Google search for prenatal development and omega-3s or infant development and omega-3s. But at the time, this was not being discussed. I'm pretty sure today, most infant formulas have some measurable mm-hmm. form of EPA or DHA in them. Because we're talking about the development of the brain in their unborn child from the get-go. Yes, yeah. I'm telling you, if and when my daughters ever decide they're going to have kids, we're having a long talk about, look, mm. six months before, you need to be up in your omega-3 game in preparation for being a feeding tomb for a newborn. Right. So omega-6 fatty acids versus Omega-3 fatty acids, that's the ratio that we're really talking about today relative to what's happening in our blood and in our body dictated by the food we put in it. And the reality is that between vegetable oils and trans fats and processed foods, we're getting way more omega-6 fatty acids than omega-3s. And omega-6 fatty acids are pro-inflammatory And omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. And there's a long biochemical pathway that goes from omega-6 fatty acids in our diet to arachidonic acid. That's the pathway. Or omega-3s to eicosapentaenoic acid, which is the anti-inflammatory pathway. But now we're talking about what is that ratio in our diet? Well, I suppose the idealist ratio would be one-to-one. But three to one or two to one is acceptable and considered still really good. So you might have three times as many omega-6s in your diet as omega-3s, but that's still considered good. No, that's better than good. So the standard American diet. The sad diet. The sad diet. Because in in so many ways. Yes. (laughs) The sad and pitiful diet. I'm going to be sick way before my time diet. Yes. And if you don't mind me throwing a plug in for another podcast on the Inbound Podcasting Network, it's the Vibrant Living Wellness Center podcast, and we go into the SAD or SAD diet in great detail. I I can't tell people to learn enough about it because Mm. there is a dearth of information people just don't know. And the more that they learn, the more that they're likely to change their behavior. And if you don't know, some years ago, the church I was going to, the pastor said one day, said, you know what? He said, I've learned over the years that people aren't likely to change their behavior unless they have enough knowledge that steers them to do so, or they hurt enough that they need to change their behavior. Great nugget of wisdom, for sure. So, and so Unfortunately, so, we all wait till we hurt enough. <laughs> At least I do. <laughs> well, and then, and sadly, further is that there, there are a lot of people today, both in emotional and physical pain, that don't have to be because they don't know this information and they have just come to accept that hurting this much is the way their balance of their life is going to be. And mm. it does not have to be that way. No. And, and so circling back, Dr. Steffi, I think I derailed you a little bit and I apologize with my comment about the sad diet, but you were going into omega threes and omega six and the ratios. That- yes. So, so the standard American diet, I've read this a couple different ways. Now the typical American has a omega six to omega three ratio of somewhere between 15 and 20 to one. Wow. And it's supposed to be three to one or better. (laughs) Have you ever had yours checked? I did. Your markers? So my story is that I had my AA to EPA ratio checked in September of 2016, Mm -hmm. and it was 9.8. Higher than four and less than 10 was considered good. So you were borderline good, barely. I, I I had... convinced myself that, oh, look at me, I'm under 10. <laughs> 9.8. So I don't really have to do that much about this. Uh, I'm sh- you know what? That's a common tale for most of us, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm in the range. I'm good. <laughs> but that was in 2016, right? That was in 2016. And I don't know who's the worst patient. The patient who doesn't know what they should be doing 
and doesn't do it because they don't know or me because I know what I'm supposed to be doing and I don't always do it. That's the worst patient. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd give me some slack on I that. I know, but, but you know what? Because I'm like you. I mean, we're all that way. I mean, uh, you know, we, we like our comforts, unfortunately. Uh, but, but, but they be, can become deadly. Well, you know, here's, here's what I talk about with patients all the time in my practice. And then we'll get back to really to the topic at hand. But this is related to that. Indeed. Well, we'll get, uh, we will definitely get to how this ties into vision. But this is good foundational information. So... When you say we like the foods we like, well, let's be clearer about that. Mm. It's not even us that like the foods we eat. It's the bad bacteria in our GI tract. There is a continuous battle in our gut in the microbiome or the bacterial population that lives there. So that is a good versus evil discussion. Bad bacteria loves sugar and simple carbohydrates. There's some research that has made the argument that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. Yes, I've heard that, read that, discussed that many times before. And that proteins in wheat and proteins in dairy act in the brain on the same receptors that opiates do. So when this bad bacteria drives these cravings, it's not even us that really wants it. It's the bad bacteria. Yeah. And the bad bacteria says to you as its living host, you know what? <laughs> I don't care if you get diabetes and lose a limb. I don't care if you get MS or lupus. I don't care if you have asthma or respiratory disease and need an oxygen tank to carry around. I don't care if you get arthritis. As long as you're feeding me sugar and carbohydrates, I'm okay with you being really sick for 40 years. Hmm. That is not right. No, but we listen to it, so we need to stop, right? But how do we do that? Is it is the answer in the omega-3s? Omega-3s, I think, do play a role in that. And I'll give you an example. So if we talk about that 15 to 21 ratio, 15 to 20 to 1 ratio, that means that we're producing way more arachidonic acid in our body than eicosapentaenoic acid, which means that our immune system is highly inflamed. Virtually every cell in our body now is on fire. Hmm. That is not the way to go about your business. You physically hurt. Your brain hurts. You're more at risk for developing a mood-regulating disorder. You're more likely going to have a, learn a learning disability. You're more likely going to get diagnosed with ADHD or ADD. This unchecked, runaway, unchecked inflammation is wreaking havoc on us every day, and we don't have to have it be that way. So to go back to my own story, 9.8, I convinced myself it was pretty good. I wasn't taking enough omega-3s as I should have been. And then I had a physical earlier in the year, and I've had some issues with my blood sugar being too high. And I'm like, oh, homie's not doing that. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, we're not going there. So You're I talking decided. talking potential pre-diabetic? I, I was beyond pre-diabetes. Mm. My physician said, Doug, you're now type 2 diabetic. And I'm like, oh, boy. no, I don't, I'm not doing that. So the first thing I decided was if my omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratio should be less than 4 to 1, then I'm on it. And... Tim, I started taking six to 9,000 milligrams a day of EPA and DHA. Now, tell me, what is the daily recommended dose? Well, that's an interesting question. And it's why we're doing this podcast, because pretty much you got to have a PhD in fish oil to make any sense out of what the heck is going on and what should I be doing? So when you typically go to the store and pick up a bottle of fish oil, and, and especially if it's a capsule, it's likely going to say serving size is one capsule, and one capsule is usually a 1,000 milligram capsule. So the first discussion that I have with patients is, are, are you taking an omega-3? Invariably, the answer is no, but in the rare case that somebody is taking an omega-3, mm -hmm. I say, how many milligrams of EPA and DHA are you taking? And they say, I don't know. Okay. How many... Capsules do you take a day? Well, I take one. 
because that's what the bottle says. All right. Well, I need you to go home and look at your bottle and report back to me in the thousand milligram capsule, how many actual milligrams of EPA and DHA are in that thousand milligrams? Because you're not taking a thousand milligrams of EPA and DHA. I'll tell you that right now, because every brand is different. And then I play a numbers game and I say, well, we don't know what your AA EPA ratio is at this point. We could talk about you ordering a test to get it done, but we don't know. But, but let's say conservatively that you should be taking 3,000 milligrams a day. Well, if you were getting a full 1,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA in that capsule, then you should be taking three capsules a day. But if you go home and your capsule says, oh, this only has 500 milligrams of EPA and DHA, well, to get the 3,000, you should be taking six of those a day. And if your capsule says it's got 100 milligrams of EPA and DHA in it, then you ought to be taking 30 of those a day. (laughs) So not all fish oil is created equal by any means. Oh, good gracious, no. Tim, there are some commercial fish oil products that when you look at the EPA and DHA content, there are no numbers. They just have little tiny asterisks. Oh, boy. So then you're just wasting your money. So so my AA EPA ratio, uh, September 2016, was 9.8. And I I mentioned that I got diagnosed recently with type 2 diabetes that I'm going to reverse and mostly have at this juncture. And it's we're barely three and a half, four months into the diagnosis. Right. You were at 9.8 and 10 was the back end of normal. 10 was the back end of good. Uh, Back end of good. But three to one or less was ideal. This is where we all should be. Mm -hmm. So, So I upped my fish oil intake and within 60 days, and I had my read testing done, it came down to three to one. Oh, wow. Amazing. Based so, upon the appropriate amount of omega-3s that you should be taking. Yes. And, you know, Tim, and I'm glad you said it in that manner because it prompted a memory for me. And that is, well, what is an appropriate amount? Because people will often, we, we talk about this in the office and people say, well, what should I be taking? I say, what's your AA EPA ratio? They're yeah. like, what the heck is that? I'm yeah. like, well, it's this, and this is how you measure it. Yeah, because the doses cannot be consistent for everybody in any type of medication or any type of supplement. Right. Um, the doses are different. So uh, so, so the, the first step for someone to find out their levels, their markers, is what? The first thing to do is get the AAEP ratio measured. And we'll include a link on a test about how to do that so that you can go read about this test availability and that it's not that hard to get measured. And the kit that I'm talking about is something that can be sent home to you. You take a finger stick, collect a few drops of blood, and you send it off to this lab. And usually within about 10 days, maybe two weeks, we've got these results back. We've got something tangible to discuss. Yeah, you've got a benchmark to, to work with. And it's, it's it, can I say the name of it? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Yeah, because, and the reason being, because I did it the other day, and I'm awaiting my results, and I can't wait. And this is a service provided through Dr. Steffi. So we'll include a link and they could just go through you. It's called Brainspan Laboratories. A Brainspan Cell Health Assessment. The health of your cells dictate the health of your entire body. We're talking about attention, memory, anxiety, and stress, chronic nerve pain and inflammation, weight management and metabolism, soft tissue, and musculoskeletal injuries. I mean, this test covers a, a wide range of markers for us to start from. And then once we get the test back, then we can make some adjustments. And that's because cellular inflammation affects every cell in our body. Hmm. And let's go back to the appropriate dosage because as an example, one of the books that I read some years ago called The Omega-3 Connection, written by a physician named Andrew Stoll. He's a neuropsychiatrist who specializes in bipolar disorder. And, and in his book, he said, look, I've done this research. We have patients with bipolar disorder who are on maximum medical therapy who still have wild mood swings until we put them on high-dose pharmaceutical-grade fish oil at the range of 10, 12, 14,000 milligrams a day. So if you've got a mood behavior disorder, odds are that you need high-dose fish oil because of this cellular inflammation, most likely driven by the way that you're eating and that you're getting way too many omega-6s in your diet and your body and brain is on fire. Hmm. I've got other research that I've read where they took a group of kids, broke them into the experimental group and a control group. So they kept them in the same curriculum. The only thing they did, Tim, 
was to give the kids in the experimental group 16,000 milligrams of fish oil a day for, I think it was 20 weeks. And over the 20 weeks, I'm not, and I'm not telling people to go out and do that much. I'm just telling right. you this research. But over the 20 weeks, periodically, I don't know, at the six and eight week mark, maybe the 14th week mark, 16th and 20th, something like that, they would go back and measure these kids' reading skills. And the kids on the fish oil, their reading outcomes just start climbing and wow. going through the roof. And the only thing they've done is up their fish oil intake. Now, the, the brain has the second highest concentration of fats in our body, only behind the retina, which has the highest concentration of fats in our body. And that's how this nutrition omega-3 fatty acid vision piece ties together. Mm. Pretty much every cell membrane in our body is made up of a phospholipid layer, water and fat. And to get nutrients into a cell, and waste products out of the cell, it has to go through these cell membranes. And your body's going to make these cell membranes out of whatever fat you consume the most of. So if you're consuming too much of bad fats, the cell membranes in your wall are made of like solid brick instead of a semi-porous membrane that nutrients and waste products can go back and forth between. Holy smokes. Wow. Holy smokes. Honestly, it, it isn't any more difficult than what I've just said. It's very simple for us to understand that the only challenge will be to make the shift. But it doesn't seem like it's that hard of a shift to take the appropriate amount of fish oil. <laughs> I mean, really? It's, it's, it seems like every episode we have this, this crazy astronomical problem. And you're like, and we can fix it with this. <laughs> It's been in front of our face the whole time, yet we didn't even know it was there. You know? you know, sometimes it's about that simple. Even though the podcast and a lot of what I talk about is move, look, and listen, what, what I didn't speak clearly about in that triad is the nutrition piece. But it is a discussion with every patient that I have. Well, it sounds like the nutrition is a major component in all three of those triads, in that, well, you know, in that triad. Well, it has to be, right? Because if, if your brain is going to train itself to develop a new skill or a better skill or a skill you didn't have, it can only do that if it's got the nutritional building blocks to be able to benefit from the training or the therapy that you're going to be doing. So yes, there are limits to what my vision therapy protocols can do if you're eating a really bad diet and you're not willing to change it. Now, I'm not saying you won't make gains, but you won't make the gains that you should have, and you won't lead the life that you should have, and you won't feel like you should if you continue to eat a crappy diet and don't change those outcomes. And tied to that, again, we got to reduce the inflammation in your body and brain. We've got to get the good bacteria to outpopulate the bad bacteria in your GI tract. And this has wide-ranging implications. I don't care if you're 90 years old and have dementia or Alzheimer's, or if you're an infant who's just now developing their nervous system, including brain and body and auditory processing and motor control skills, it truly, we are what we eat, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. We are what we're able to digest. So even if you eat really well, but your GI tract is a train wreck, you're not absorbing what you're eating and your body can't use it. And it does not have to be that way. And I am happy to be an agent of change to help you get back on track and know the value of these omega-3 fatty acids and how they affect your brain and vision. Thank you for listening to the Move, Look, and Listen podcast with Dr. Doug Steffi, brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial Audible membership at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. You'll find over 180,000 titles to choose from, including books mentioned here in the Move, Look, and Listen podcast. You can listen to these books through your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, your computer, or even an MP3 player. And if for any reason and at any time you choose to cancel your membership, you keep all of your audiobook downloads. Give it a shot for 30 days. You got nothing to lose. Support the Move, Look, and Listen podcast by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash inbound 
We will include a link for your convenience in the show notes of this and every episode of the podcast. And of course, if you'd like some more information regarding Dr. Steffi's practice or to make an appointment, we will include links in the show notes to Dr. Steffi's website and his YouTube channel. Dr. Steffi's website is steffioptometry.com. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-Y optometry.com. You can also call the office at 626-332-4510. Again, all of Dr. Steffi's contact information will be included in the show notes of each and every episode. One last request before we let you go on to the next episode. Please subscribe to the podcast from whichever platform you might be listening in. Of course, it is free to subscribe and it ensures that every time we post a new episode, you'll find it right there waiting for you to listen in your podcast app of choice. We really do appreciate you listening. And until next time, for Dr. Steffi of the Move, Look, and Listen podcast, I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network.